meeting to order. We are right at 6.15 with over quorum, so that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to pass it over to our other service leader over here and uh, for some announcements. So as I mentioned in my email, we are um, well contracting with the Community Engagement Institute from Wichita State in order to help us develop our climate action plan. That was kind of um, the idea once it was uh, created. So as part of that, you guys have to help come up with a climate action plan or anything like that or something like that. So as part of this, there are going to be two candidates from SIB that will help develop this. And this will come back to you guys, so it's not just going to be a unanimous thing. Um, but they will be kind of in the session. So this is gonna be a little bit extra time outside of just this meeting. Um, and then it'll have myself and then the facilitators from the Community Engagement Institute. So Lauren has um, emailed me and said she's available and it's able if there is more than one other candidate that also wants to be a part of this, um, you guys can vote or however you'd like to decide that. Is there anyone else who would also like to be a part of this? I would. Now, Michael, if this takes place after you have been um, replaced due to your resignation. I'm resigning as vice chair, not as a member of the committee. Oh, okay. Because, sorry, then I misunderstood because in your email, it made it sound like you, like, Ho Heisel was going to have to pick someone else. Well, I mean, eventually he should. I mean, I don't even live in District 3. Yeah, that's actually not a requirement of... Um, Whoever picks you, so you are still going to be part of SIB, just not vice chair. Yes, I, I just feel like uh, maybe someone else would be uh, better suited to that role, considering the direction we're not going. Okay, sounds good. Um, is there anyone else who wanted to be a part of the CEI facilitation? Okay. This is James. I'll throw my name in the hat if you need okay. to another person. He has to because he's so, another gas company. James, Lauren, and Michael. So we yep. so two. We can only have two. Okay. Um, so if we can only have two, um, I guess we need to do a vote. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I guess the way we could do this is we need to get two out of the three. Secret, secret ballots in the top two. I guess so. <laughs> is that, can we do that? I don't think you guys can do secret ballots. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, well, I guess we'll do it by individual and whoever gets them. You can only vote twice. It's going to be a little complicated. We can only vote twice. Okay. Um, so you want two little, we can tear pieces off of the agenda and write it and fold it and one on one name and one on the other name. Would that be secret Apparently vote? we're not I allowed. Don't, I think we have to I do have it. To I could double check with our lawyers, but we wouldn't be able to do it today. Um, and we'd like to get this facilitation started sooner rather than later. I think we have um, to do it by. Yeah, but you have to, okay. just because it's a public. Let's speak right up. Okay. Yeah, they're okay. tough. They can take it. All right, here, I'm just gonna, okay, Lauren, Michael, James. All right, can we have a, a, a quick or overview of what this job is going to entail and exactly. what the three people are. Yes, so I, I do apologize um, because we just got it signed by the city manager and approved for the contract. I haven't sent it out yet, but I can definitely send it out after this. Oh, let me pull up the Can we have two positions and an alternate? Yes, if we'd like to do that. That's a good idea. So we could just vote for the alternate. We could just vote for the alternate. That yeah, thank you. What are they doing? <laughs> Same thing we're yeah. thinking. <laughs> yeah, she, they're gonna. She's gonna pull it up to give us more of a description. And if we want to simplify this, I'd be happy to just be the alternate too. If we want to speed that up. If, if you're good with that. Yeah, you bet. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Thank yeah. you, James. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Problem solved. Thank you, James. Okay, after okay. this meeting, um, tomorrow morning, I will send out the, what exactly CEI lined out for us that this will, that will take place during this facilitation. Um, secondly, I'd like to kind of keep you guys updated on the part-time sustainability position. Um, so we are in second round of interviews currently, and we're finishing those up tomorrow. We narrowed it down to two candidates. So um, 
hopefully after tomorrow we'll know who will extend we'll be able to extend an offer and they are two very well qualified candidates are you able to give us kind of any generic backgrounds of like where they're coming from or what their kind of profiles look like um are they local so actually neither of them are local which we were surprised about one of them has experience working with local government in the kansas city missouri area and the other one i honestly cannot remember i'm really sorry these first interviews took place a couple weeks ago so Mm -hmm. But was once the we Kansas get, City one where they, you know, working on local government and something sustainability oriented? Yes. Or? So, and they have okay. experience with like ICLE and those types of things as well. So, okay. Yeah. So they do have experience with grants and things like that as well. Awesome. Mm. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Um, the last of your announcements? Yes. Okay. And then as Michael said, um, he sent an email earlier today um, submitting his resignation. So just wanted to accept that resignation. I don't think we need to do a vote on that or anything. Resignation as vice chair. As vice chair, correct. Yeah, yeah as, chair. Yes, as vice chair to be to be clear. Um, due to the, the amount that we need to get through today, I don't think we'll vote on a new vice chair today, but that will be on next month's agenda um, to replace Michael. Okay. What are the terms? When, when does it start and when does it end? So we voted you in what? Maybe as much as a year. It's for life. Maybe as much as a year ago. So yeah. So probably another year until I, both of us so would it's be undefined. Hmm? It is defined. It is def- yeah. Well, it's like, it's, two it's two years, years. and then you okay. can be renewed in that position. Okay. But two years total. I think Michael's done one of the two. So it would. This be. would just be continuing Michael's term, and then vote at the end when we also vote for a new chair. A new chair next year. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so be thinking about if you would like to potentially be um, vice chair, um, and we can vote on that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll kind of do some recruitment around that, I'm sure. But um, if anyone is interested in vice chair, please let us know, and then we can do an official vote next month. Approval of minutes. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the August minutes? Yeah. One minor correction on the third page. In the middle of the paragraph that Tom starts, Tom supports using the funding. Um, it says Deborah highlights that the cost to weatherize a single home on average is fifty-two hundred dollars. That wasn't me. I don't remember who it was, but it wasn't me. And then I did mention the cost per tree rough number, but but I didn't. I have no idea what it costs to weatherize a single home. So. I think okay. that was Lauren. Don't it you might think? Have... Lauren, was that you? Do you remember? Probably, it's probably something that I grabbed from some of the SCAD data. Okay, yeah. So okay. I can make that correction, um, but if you guys want to go ahead and vote with yeah, that, correction. that correction. Yeah, I, I would move that we accept the minutes with the minor correction noted. Okay. Second. Perfect. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the motion passes. All right, I am going to pass back over to you again now for the city tree presentation. All right, so we do have Paul and Gary here to present, or maybe, oh yeah, you guys, yeah. So um, I will actually be passing out um, the presentation and the policy if you guys would like a copy or if you have your electronic copy, um, maybe we'll have extras for people in the audience. Wait, is that big tower? Oh, that's City Hall. We're near, we're near it, just nearby. It's across the river. Oh, do you want that? Yeah. Oh, you, we've driven past that. Oh, right. Maybe actually, on the way home, I'll drive past. Sorry, I didn't know. Wait, thanks, you actually gave me two. No. Yeah. It is big. I thought that was a little <laughs> thick. <laughs> yeah. I really have to look on my phone. It is. So right. yeah. Thank you. I see it. And I'll put the extras over there. Okay. 
So I'll get started. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity for that you've given me to be here to uh, present this part of the uh, policy that we've been working on. Go to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> Sir, uh, yes. can you tell me your name again? Oh, sure. I totally apologize. My name is Gary Ferris. I am the city arborist. I am uh, one part of the committee that was working on the uh, tree policy that uh, you have in front of you now. And uh, this, this general policy gives us a written guideline. Uh, it puts everybody on the same page, everybody is on the same page uh, to make purpose driven decisions uh, on what we're, we're going to do with trees, where we're going to put them. Uh, how we're going to uh, approach uh, public projects. Uh, and this policy does actually apply specifically to uh, public projects. And it's really intended to give a value, an appropriate value to the urban canopy at, as, a, as a part of our infrastructure. Um, this policy integrates a lot of the information that was provided on the uh, NASA developed study. I believe you probably saw that. Uh, talked a lot about heat islands and lacking tree cover. And so we integrated a lot of the information that was provided there oh, nice. into what this policy provides. Uh, environmental justice, climate change, that kind of thing. We will center stage in that study and we take that and uh, we want to effectively target those areas where people experience disproportionately higher temperatures and the negative effects that, uh, that comes from that. So, like I said, this does provide guidance uh, for forestry, for public works, for various departments that deal with tree issues and projects. Uh, and one of the main things that uh, we talked about throughout developing this policy was uh, community engagement, uh, stakeholder engagement, and communication with what, what's happening. Um, so this is a map that was developed through that NASA developed study that they provided for us. Uh, there's 17 uh, census tracts that are depicted uh, that are they're not numbered one through 17, but they are numbered tracts on this uh, map. And those are the areas that are identified as having the least amount of tree cover in combination with other demographic data points. Uh, so those are the areas that we would utilize uh, as, as target areas and uh, really focus some of our efforts, not all of our efforts necessarily, but a lot of our effort into these areas to try and build up camp, tree canopy there. Can you give us kind of an east-west? Where is Kellogg on here? Oh, that, that right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The top of the two little green rectangles should be Douglas, I think. Right, right. there, isn't that, is that Douglas? Douglas? Yes. Kellogg, Douglas, in this area. Okay. Yeah, so here's, here's the river here. City Hall area. So just tell it to be south of there. So you can see that the city core and the, these areas are surrounding the city core that are the most affected. So it it's all over the central part of the city, really, is what's going on. Could I ask what do the numbers indicate? Uh, those are leftover numbers from their map. Uh, we didn't change because that. they're not a data point at all. It, that's not our data. Okay. Is it right. just the census tract number? I mean, there's number. Yeah. There, there was a number. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there are the district numbers. I mean, like they're, they're well, yeah, sorry, district was the wrong word, but they're kind of area numbers. Tracks numbers. Yeah. yeah. The 17 at risks are not one through 17. Correct. Right? Yeah. Whatever numbers were already there. Right. But it's the brown or the dark, mm -hmm. the highlighted ones. Yes. Brown or red one. So uh, we are doing a contracted tree planting starting this winter. Uh, the contract has already been let out. It's already in place. The contractor is going to start planting trees November, December timeframe. Uh, 
and that is going to be one of the first projects, one of the first major initiatives that's going to take place in these census tracts. So um, one of these 17 actually is going to be in, in this area right here, number four. Uh, and that project and other projects similar to it, where we really focus on an area, we're going to utilize social media, we're going to utilize our city uh, websites, we're going to utilize dad meetings, other various methods of communications. Uh, we've got some plans for some signage, things like that to let the neighborhood know uh, what's going on, let the district know what's going on, the council person know what's going on, and then just just general public too. So uh, we're going to be uh, working on our level of communication with that. Um, let's see, go to the next one. Gary, can you tell us who the contractor is that's going to be putting the trees? Uh, that would be Cedars. Cedars, okay. Yes. So EPA uh, identifies planting trees as one of the most effective ways to mitigate heat islands. And that's what we want to do. And, and me being in forestry, that's right in line with what I'm uh, intending to do and with the projects that go on that uh, Paul's going to be talking about, uh, we want to target spaces and, and places for, with right tree, right place uh, mentality, and we want to be effective with what we do. We don't want to just throw trees out there. We want to be effective with it, uh, and there are uh, lots of considerations that go into it. Um, the Last point I want to make is that we are in this for the long haul. Uh, this is a generational problem, and we want to plant trees now. They may not have the effect that we hope that they would have today, but yet in 20, 30, 50 years, they will have that effect. But if we don't do anything today, we're out of luck 20, 30, 50 years. So, we do have an obligation to act. We do have an obligation to act responsibly. And I believe that this tree policy uh, helps us uh, align our objectives. Can I ask a quick question? When sure. you say you're in it for the long haul, I mean, other than of course, what you just said in terms of you plant a tree now and it's gonna bear the fruit, so to speak, in you know, a few decades. Are you, do you also mean long haul in the sense of this is gonna be an over time continuous? I do. It, okay. Yeah. So it, in the back of the tree policy, there's an implementation plan for forestry mm -hmm. specific to the, the forestry activities. Uh, we have already a rotation through the city where we plant trees in various parts of the city and after each year. Mm -hmm. So we keep following that particular rotation that we've been doing for 30, 40 years already, but some of the trees that we would normally be planting, say in park area, mm -hmm. we would take, I believe it's 20, 30% of those trees and go to the most adjacent sensitive area, mm -hmm. heat island area, yeah. and plant those trees in those neighborhoods. Okay. So that helps us keep our water trucking more localized, which is an efficiency issue. Uh, when you have limited resources to allocate to that, we want to be as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our general plan uh, is to take trees that we would be planting elsewhere in, in that area, yes, but be specific about these yeah. areas. And I have a follow-up question, and this kind of goes to a point Deborah's made in the past that we have a lot of trees across the city that are aging out, so they might still exist today, but, you know, come next winter or next yes. big storm or whatnot. So... What's the plan on that to kind of replace these hundred year old plus trees? Well, that's part of our planting plan. Okay. Uh, we don't necessarily plant a one for one. We flat cannot plant a one for one. Sure. Uh, okay. In a perfect world, we would plant two or three to every one that's lost. Right. Uh, we don't have the resources for that at mm -hmm. all, not even close. Uh, but we do recognize that. You know, back in the 60s, 70s, when uh, Dutch Elm disease was coming through, 80% mm -hmm. uh, of the street trees in Wichita were American elves, yeah. and they got wiped out. So when that was replanted, those 
50 or 60 years ago, a lot of them were planted with Siberia now, mm -hmm. which are 50, 60 years old, and that's their whole life cycle yeah. in a good environment. And this is an urban environment, which is stressful on trees. Right. So they're, they're aging out, exactly what you said. And we're cutting down a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're diseased. It's not because it's they're, they're, they're just aging out. Yeah. Uh, so we're in that cycle, got to start over in those places. Uh, but we can only do so within the resources that we have. So uh, we're trying to allocate the resources in, in an efficient way. Yes. Um, so with allocating resources in an efficient way, are there any um, areas of opportunity maybe to innovate um, community-based uh, collaborations to maybe provide resources like uh, two additional trees or three additional trees for one tree that is uh, replanted because I know there's a lot of uh, people that love the trees here mm -hmm. and that are familiar with how to at least start some trees either through maybe a school program or well locals. We are working on some things internally uh -huh. uh, to create pathways for community engagement in that process of getting the community involved in tree planting. Right. Any homeowner can plant a tree on the property. Yeah. You don't have to plant something on the street right of way to be effective. Uh, in fact, it's probably more effective on, well, at least for the homeowner, to be planted on the southwest corner of the home so that it's shaded during the summer, reduce you know, uh, electric needs and that kind of thing, yeah. uh, and costs and whatnot. Um, but so we absolutely encourage that to happen all the time. And it does happen a lot. <laughs> but when we look at what we're doing and look at a neighborhood, the street right of way is roughly a real rough guesstimate is about 10% of the land mass. So we can affect <clears throat> that portion of a neighborhood. And again, it's only 10%. So we do need to get neighborhoods involved and uh, get people excited about planting trees is really what it boils down to. Is there any kind of money for a PR campaign around that? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Fair uh, enough. I, I, would, I would love for there to be a funding stream for things like that. I don't have one in my back pocket, but uh, <laughs> gotcha. I'm, I'm open to ideas for sure. Okay. I'm just curious, uh, I mean, anytime you come up with a plan, it's going to cost money. And we seem to be in such financial straits here in Wichita. Did they give you a limit of how much this plan could cost before you even started? No, uh, I have a budget in forestry. Okay. And so I'm working within that budget. Okay. But you would like to have more, obviously, to do, it like wouldn't. you said, in an ideal world. Right. It wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, right. Uh, but in that ideal world, you know, here I am working in forestry. That's where all the attention goes. That, that is absolutely not sustainable uh, as a community. I mean, it's a piece of it, yes, and it's an important piece, right. but it's not the whole picture. So, yeah, I mean, okay. I recognize that forestry is not the entire world. Yes, sir. And, uh, and you've been doing this a while, right? Uh, I've been a certified artist for 25 years. Okay, and, and how long here in Wichita? 12 years. 12 years, but well, thanks for being here. And uh, does, does this plan, this tree planting plan, you're talking about being economical with watering, it's it's also very important to to maintain mature trees, not just trees, I mean, trees that are aging out, it's a different category, but there's also mature trees that we need to be taken care of. Is, is this part of that at all? This plan does not address uh, care for mature trees. Mm. Um, that is that wasn't part of our scope that we were assigned, um, but we do that activity. But this was more about um, tree loss and affecting and mitigating that distance between the canopy that we had versus the canopy that we were putting back. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> just because you, of course, need extra things to do. Can, can I ask that somebody pursue trying to encourage people to water? I've seen 
four or five inch caliper trees that were planted 10, 12 years ago, street trees in my neighborhood in Delano that died last winter. And I think largely because of lack of water. Um, if a homeowner would go out there with a hose once or twice a year, it would probably be enough to make the difference. Well, and I don't think it's gonna be any better given what this summer has been like. That's, that's where neighborhood associations come into play uh, and good communication through there and, and active, active people in their neighborhood. Okay, so I need to go knock on doors and say, why are you a poor tree? <laughs> I can do that. Yes. Um, just to kind of um, look back, like, coattail what you're saying with the watering of trees. Um, how did you get your neighborhood associations activated to, um, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a novice to this, so, like, I, Does every district have uh, separate neighborhood associations or district advisory board? Elizabeth Mike. Get on the city website. There'll be one for your city councilor mm -hmm. and, and a regular monthly meeting. That's I mean Liz can yeah, Liz can tell you okay. more, but that that would be where I would start if and you want to go link up with people who are interested in the neighborhood. Okay. Well, and look one at, of the things that ICT Trees wants to do is to work with citizens in neighborhoods. And we have right now about five meetings I don't coming up where we are meeting with neighborhood associations. I'm in Denver and Paw Patrol. That, yeah. to help with the neighborhood association to establish what they're calling a tree committee. And we also, especially in the know. winter months, we're planning to be prepared to start teaching classes and develop some citizen arborists, um, utilizing the same kind of um, project that Upwood Trees in Tulsa offers. So there may be more folks that, that are willing to walk up and down the block and say, have you thought about watering your tree? And is aware of the need to do that. And it would also be a good network for the forestry division when they are trying to communicate with with the community and with the neighborhood about what's going on for, uh, relative to trees. Because people tend to just, it, it travels on the air <laughs> and they get all stressed and excited about it. Uh, and good communication, I think, is going to be important. And later when we get to it, I think there's some possible problems in the policy relative to communication that I'll mention later. <coughs> I did want to let you know, though, if you look at each of the city council members' pages, scroll down, there is a list of all their neighborhood associations. So you can find out a contact person. Some of them don't exist great. anymore. That's but contact people, boundaries, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that is on every city council member's page. So you can find them there. And each council member has a parkable commissioner. And most of them are very interested in trees and in working with Debs and the community neighborhood association. Did you have a question over Yeah, I was just, this probably takes us further afield, and I don't mean to take up too much time, but since people were talking about, you know, watering these trees in the right of way and, and kind of taking some responsibility for the neighborhood trees, legally, what is the relationship between the people who live beside a tree that's in the right of way and the tree that's in the right of way? Uh, so I live uh, on the west side. I live along West Link, south of Central. Uh, we have a runoff for the Cowskin Creek that runs right in front of our house. And we've lived there for 17 years and uh, trees have been planted and trees have been cut down over the years, sometimes for reasons of obvious blight. Other times I haven't been clear why they've taken the trees out. Uh, for a good long time, there was an elm directly across from our home that, um, well, we'd, uh, we, we, we claimed a limited amount of, of, of propriety over that tree. We'd hung a swing on it for our kids, and, and, and they used it and whatnot. And I've just always wondered, would we be legally in trouble for doing that? Technically... Attaching something to a street tree or a street right-of-way tree, a public tree, is against uh, ordinance. So that's why it was taken down. 
from him, and then we put it back up again. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there a long time, and then it was taken down. Yeah. And then we put it, but then eventually the kids were grown up. And so, but so yeah, it is against city ordinance. But you can water them. Something. But you can water them. That's not uh, against the city ordinance. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> no, oh. and please feel my my general understanding is that this this street trees in the public right of way, which usually extends from the back edge of the sidewalk to the back edge, if your neighborhood has sidewalks, the trees in the public right of way belong to the city. And, but that property that's between the traffic way and the edge of the right of way, the adjacent homeowner is responsible for maintaining. Have I got that right? That is right. Which means you have to like mow the lawn and I think water the tree if it needs water. But if you want to say remove the tree, you have to get the city permission, and you may or may not get it, depending on whether they think you have a good reason or not. Mm -hmm. Or you call them and put it on the schedule, and they will come around in a year or two. In a couple of years, yeah, maybe. I'm just they, and not, I sorry, that came out worse than I meant. You guys are just so overwhelmed. There's so many trees that are because you, your budget got cut to zero during COVID, right? Pretty much. There was a lot of things that happened during COVID. That yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay. Sorry. Well, thank you for. Okay. Your... I'm going to turn it over yeah. to Paul and yeah. give him an opportunity. Yep. Thank you. I'm Paul Gunzelman. I'm the city engineer. And I want to talk about capital improvement projects within this tree policy and how it applies. When we design capital improvement program CIP projects, um, we do retain um, and protect as many trees as possible within that project limits. Um, we will um, include a land, city landscape architect, designer, and forestry expert on the on the project team, and we do that now. Um, any plans we have, you know, we we get with the forestry or or park department, have them review the plans of what trees we would be planting back. Policy establishes criteria um, for impact of trees based on number and or size of the tree. And that gets into, um, you know, those would be evaluated on project by project basis. And some of the criteria that we would be um, considering is, you know, there are 10 or more trees that have, you know, eight inch diameter at breast height, you know, along the project. And if we're going to remove 25% of or more of those, then we would you know, do a tree plan, which we typically do a tree plan on the, um, capital improvement projects anyway. And another condition would be if there's one large tree that might need to be removed that's 28 inches diameter or larger, that's the breast height. We do, um, as we do now, we when we um, present projects to the district advisory board, um, we, we present those at concept stage. So we don't, you know, might not know the true impact of trees at this time. Um, with this policy, we will be going out to the district advisory boards when the plans are, you know, further along, say 50 to 80 percent, so that we know the impact of what might impact trees. So, and when we do go out to district advisory boards, we do um, notify the adjacent properties along those project limits. So, this policy does add that extra step of going back out to the district advisory boards. Um, public engagement, as, as Gary had mentioned, would be throughout the project development, social media, direct contract. I mentioned district advisory boards and on the city website. Efforts will be made to protect existing trees to remain within project boundaries. And that kind of goes back to your point about mature trees and how we take care of them. So um, that would be, we would do a detail sheet um, to you know, show how to protect the tree, including the root zone, um, construction equipment not being too close to it, you know, that would compact that soil um, to minimize compaction around the trees, as well as um, taking measures to protect the tree trunk as the construction project is going on. The trees that are to be placed on the capital improvement projects will follow the guidelines set forth in the existing landscape policy for city street with tree planting plan, as I mentioned before, developed for each project. 
um, what we take into, you know, those, that tree planning plan would take into consideration the existing utilities along the project above and below ground, uh, minimum distance from, from intersections, traffic signals, pedestrian crosswalks, and railroad crossings. Um, we don't want to plant a tree too close to the intersection that, you know, as it matures, you know, it would block visibility. So typically we want those trimmed up six feet. And we don't want them to be in a position that they would block the traffic signal indication. So we take that into consideration for placement. Um, and then, you know, of course, driveways and sidewalks. Within this policy, um, there is a um, recommended tree list, I believe, to be planted. And we, again, we work with the park department to make sure, you know, trees planted in right away make sure they are, they are the appropriate trees so that they are not growing into the utility lines above that would have to be trimmed later or, you know, tree roots that would might push up sidewalks as they mature as well. If space is not available to accommodate the project plan, um, the city would make every attempt to plant the trees in a project area within close proximity. I think Gary talked about this a little bit as well. Um, you know, if we can't plant them on the on within that project, then we would um, look for an area within a quarter mile of the project site. And if that's not available, then we would go to the nearest vulnerable um, census track identified in the NASA. Okay. And I think so. This was uh, this was presented to the city council as a workshop yesterday. These were our next, you know, we're here tonight. We go to the park board um, October 3rd, October 2nd, sorry. And then any private, the district advisory boards and, you know, get any other comment before we complete this, finalize this plan. Yes. yes, sir. Do you also feel like uh, you have budget restrictions that keep you from doing what you really feel like you should be doing? You know, I think, I don't know that, we have that. I think what we run into on capital improvement projects is I think we're more limited to space. You know, we try to keep the trees, you know, what we can, you know, if we need to meander the sidewalk a little bit around, you know, if there is an existing tree, but, you know, just working through, you know, the sidewalk and or if there's a bike path on the other side of the street, the existing utilities, you know, it's just, it's more of a space confinement that we see in the right of way. So, but we, and I think in years past, we tried to get as many trees within that area as we can. And you've you know, driven through Tulsa recently, I assume, to see I, what a fine job they've done in populating their city. I have so. not specifically Tulsa, but driven around other places. There's a noticeable so, difference. I highly recommend you going to visit okay. them. We have a question over here. Um, <clears throat> McAdams Park, is that considered the Chester Lewis project? I mean, not Chester Lewis, Carl, Carl, Carl Center. Center. Yes. Are any trees going to be affected there? Uh, with that I think project? there's some. There are some, yes. Yeah. But, <clears throat> okay, so I have two, you know, the other part is if trees are going to be removed from parks that are here, right? That rather than replacing the trees in the park, you would put them somewhere else? I think if there's space within that park, we would plant trees there. But, you know, on some of the, like the road projects, if there's not space there to meet a plan, then we would move those elsewhere within a quarter mile of that project area. But I think there would typically be space in the park to plant trees back. That we yeah, because I mean this is a park, right? And um, to just turn it into a recreation center area or whatever yeah. at the expense of it being a green area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are quite mature trees back. too. Comment, sure. I have a couple of questions, and both of you, if you don't mind. Is the draft policy online now? I don't know that it is. I don't think it is. No. So, yeah. The only one I could find was the one that was published April 1st, 2020. Yeah. That's still online in the park department. Um, I love both in public works and um, the park department. Um, 
just wanted to see if it was online. The other question is um, about the, the question of policy. How firm is policy? It's not an ordinance. It's not an administrative regulation. Some sort. It's, it's will be followed or is taken seriously, I take it. I'm not challenging you. <laughs> no, we are, we are, we have talked about this. We are fully committed to take that extra step to go back to the district advisory board. Once, as I said, right now we, we present the project, but it's really a concept, you know, stage. We, we don't know, you know, we kind of have an idea of what truth, but once we get further into design, then we know more of the impact to the existing trees on the planet you know, within that project. So, but we, yes, we will be going back to, that is a step that we will, that we are committed to doing, going, you know, for that additional engagement. And, I and we would make, re, you know, we would try to start, <coughs> we would try to reach out to that, you know, adjacent property owners specifically as well. You know, we invite all the adjacent property owners right. now, but we would, you know, try to reach out to them. Whether they come to the meeting or not, that's up to them, but we would try to, yes. I've got one other comment, and I want to preface that by saying I'm in favor of the tree policy. I think it's good that we have one. I think it's just a little more bare bones that I would like to see, um, but it's, um, it, oh, can grow. it can grow. It can, we'll, it's a learning process, and we'll all learn over time, and it can be improved. One of the factors that I think is confusing is the notification, the various notification. And even at one point, it says, I may Where are you looking? <clears throat> uh, it's in two or three it. different places. Yeah. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell who's supposed to be doing what, because sometimes won't this involve contractors? Will contractors be required to do some notification? I know it mentions maintenance staff would be doing notification. Uh, I'm not sure where you're referencing. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can find it. Number uh, 17, page nine, seven. Page nine says if a tree must be removed, and the tree removal is always um, problematic, it's always, it, it creates a ruckus in the neighborhood. If a tree must be removed as a result of the maintenance activity, the personnel performing the maintenance will notify adjacent property owners prior to the maintenance activity. And I didn't know if that meant it would always be city maintenance staff, uh, forestry maintenance staff, or sometimes a contract. I, I think that's more reference to some of our utility projects that we might have, sanitary sewer or something in the backyard through easements, that's what that's referencing more so than I think. And of course, and then, yeah. notification in that instance would be crucial Probably. if you're going on people's property. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Similar to that statement there, the tree must be removed as a result of the maintenance activity. It doesn't quite make sense. Wouldn't it be lack of maintenance? Well, no, you have to answer. read, no, read no, the really two numbers no. up ahead of it. Because if you have a, a, a water main leak that has to oh, be that's right. main water sure. main okay. or Sorry. sanitary sewer, okay. you know, that, that's that's what the maintenance is. Okay. Not yeah. I misunderstood. Not Sorry. treatment. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say yes. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Right. Right. That was utility time. <laughs> Engineers. <laughs> Yes, uh, following uh, along with Elizabeth's with the uh, attention she uh, drew to, you know, the question of notification. Um, is there any kind of timeline attached to any of these? Like, you know, the notification must take place within a day before the maintenance activity, a week, a month. I, I mean, you got the district advisory board meetings here, and of course they only meet once a month. And so presumably we're talking about a stretched out timeline but you know there is no specific no specification here of you know these notifications. So again, I mean, I mean maybe harping on uh, notification in particular kind of misses the boat. There's been a strong emphasis here on communication, and so if you want a strong policy in regards to communication, then maybe 
you need to build in expectations for when those notifications take place, how much time there will be, you know, between this step and that step when it comes to notify. I don't know what, you know, the best timeline would be. I would really, really strongly hope that it is not like we promise we'll hang something on the door of, of someone the day before we cut down their tree. But I, I can understand that maybe you can't do it like say four months in advance or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and I think it could depend on, you know, if it's a water main break, we might not, I mean, we've got to do what we can to get that water fair enough fixed. You know, if it's a sanitary sewer replacement, then I think we've got some more, you know, if it's project related, we've got some more time. That we can make. Well, then it might be, then you might want to break down, you know, some of these comments on maintenance to distinguish between, uh, you know, emergency actions you know, where there's like a water main break or something that must be dealt with immediately versus other more long-term means. Yeah, and I think 26 speaks yeah, to the emergency to type one, so. Corrective so, yeah. actions are necessary to provide for public safety. Right, during water main break, cities man, yeah. So it kind of speaks to the emergency. So we might have to work on the other portion of that. Any other questions, comments? Okay. I'm glad it's here. And mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. I think it will evolve over time, but it's a really solid start. So thank you all for yeah, thank I you. know you guys have put a lot of work into it. Before cool. I fully say sign up on this, um, anyone online that wanted to make a comment or qu had a question? No. Was that Gary? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure who I'm talking to, but uh, that, Gary Ferris, yes. It is Gary, yeah. Okay, I just, I, I couldn't see him, so the voice just sounded familiar, that song. Yeah, go a little further, it's kind of angled that way. The voice sounded familiar. <laughs> okay. Does he have one more question? Yeah. Time? Next part we're meeting is the ninth, not the second. It's the second Monday. I don't know where we got that. I'm not really sure where we got that, but I'm glad it's not on the second. Okay. Well, well, really okay. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. I... All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you both Thank you. For, for presenting. Thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Next on our minds all. Can I make one last commentary? Sure. One of the things that this has in it is a really pretty solid reporting process. And if that is, is really strict, strenuously or strictly followed, I think we will learn quickly over time how it's working and if in the notification process, who does what is confusing that it's ironed out. But also just the numbers and getting, I, one of my early criticisms was there's no baseline. Done a big study and you know exactly what you know what our, where our canopy stands now, but we will develop it over time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you guys kind of heard about our tree policy. We are going to do other things to try and mitigate kind of those heat areas. Um, one of the things I'm working on is a urban heat mitigation plan, and this literally just came about last week. So we're still kind of in those processes. I literally just put it an outline to paper, but I am gonna be, this will come eventually to SIB, but currently I am working with our internal environmental team, which is a team I put together with a representative from each department internally um, to help me. Currently, we were just focusing on different internal projects we can do to be more sustainable as a city, um, just internally, but we want to move our focus currently a little bit, we're gonna shift our focus for this next project to be our urban heat mitigation plan. So we're gonna put something together that kind of outlines outwardly facing. It's gonna include things like um, heat resilient infrastructure, green spaces, kind of things like that. Um, so this will come to you guys eventually, but I want you to know that we are working on other things aside from the tree canopy to try and mitigate the heat. Perfect. Any questions, comments? Are you following any of the things that came out of the uh, sustainability proposal that uh, WSU produced? Yeah, so we are using that to kind of help put in some kind of projects and some kind of baselines for what we're doing and looking into those things as well. So this will be incorporated. 
And I, to understand that that might include things like the color of asphalt that's put down to be reflective rather than. Yeah, so we were looking, one of the things, and please keep in mind, this is still just a draft of things that literally just came um, that I wanted to look at to help outside of what we could do with the tree canopy, something that might be a little bit more immediate, but still meaningful. Um, right now I was looking at pool roofs, so different initiatives change the color of roofs and different um, things that we can do to try and stop the heat from being um, pulled in and absorbed um, to help with energy, ooh, energy efficiency as well and possible solar panels and things like that and how we can have solar panels also um, not absorb so much heat. Kent, you reacted to that. Did you want to say I something? Did. Yeah. I am so sorry to see so many black rooms and black homes being constructed out there. What is the reasoning behind that? Does anybody have a notion? HGTV uh -huh. thinks it's fashionable. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, that's the black house thing. Yeah. It's it stupid. Is. I mean, maybe <laughs> if you're in like the Arctic or someplace, but here yeah. it's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I saw you react to it. I was like, I will get kind of chance to. It's not, if Jennifer <laughs> prayers, yeah. The, you know. Yeah. So we are still, um, like I said, we're very early stages. I'm hoping to meet with the entire group sometime mid October. So I'm hoping to have you guys a kind of a draft, hopefully here in November. Um, if I'm being really optimistic, maybe by the next meeting in October, but I'm not going to keep my fingers crossed with everyone's schedule. So hopefully by November, I'll have something for you guys to take a look at, give recommendations on, comments, thoughts, all that kind of thing. <laughs> Please do include, though, um, mitigation of road mm -hmm. heat. I've actually already been in contact with Gary Jansen on that. Mm -hmm. um, and he has several people that he included on coatings that you can put on blacktop mm -hmm. that will lessen that heat and make it more reflective. So it's possible. It'll be an additional cost, but it is possible. But when you concrete think about... would be better than blacktop, but concrete is, I don't know how much more expensive, That's, but yeah. a lot. But when you think about not just roads, but all the parking lots, mm -hmm. God, if that could all be a few shades lighter, that would make yeah. an enormous difference. Yeah. And as soon as they lighten up, you know, they start to get gray. They put a sealant on them that's black. <laughs> and then they're black. So it's just really frustrating. Um, but this is a huge, that's a big part of what makes Wichita a heat sink. Is mm -hmm. all the black. pavement and the black top pavement. Yeah. It really needs to be addressed and it will cost money. That's why that Nassau map is centered around the center, the center of Wichita because mm -hmm. that's all sidewalks and parking. All and streets, yeah. Streets, and there's no okay. trees. Yeah. I gave a presentation uh, a couple of years ago on the Sierra Club, uh, and one of them was turf block. Does that ring a bell with anyone? Yeah. Yeah. It's, Useful in some situations, but you sure can't, you know, make yeah, a main road out of it. And but certainly can accommodate passenger cars. Yeah, uh, and the blocks themselves can be made of concrete, possibly that could be grown and reduced in chances. So, just kind of final things for this. So that whatever comes of that kind of plan and then whatever we get from the climate action plan that you guys will eventually approve. Um, this will hopefully help with kind of what we're going to have this part-time position applying for grants. So we'll kind of already have a list and ideas. It'll help make us be a little bit more focused in certain areas that you guys will outline. Um, so this will help the part-time person really zone in on what kind of grants we want to be applying for. Um, and there's currently one that I'm looking at that helps implement climate action plans, so. That actually leads to a question. So, you know, with the, the part-time, we also agreed that some of the money that was left over was gonna go to help with a grant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. writer. Any movement on that uh, piece I'm, of it, or is that so more? So that's up to you guys, kind of whatever you bring forth. I will let you know that part of this positions. So if you guys wanna um, bring someone forward, that's kind of what you guys wanna do, but this, part-time position is also written in the description to look for and apply for grants. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a big part of their position. With that though, so when we talked about this, the day that we voted for it, mm -hmm. part of that was the idea that we'd find, we'd get them some support so they could actually work on more sustainability projects with the time that they're allotted. Mm -hmm. So I just want to keep that in mind. I want that to be on the forefront of this. And then back to the board, you know, us finding the kind of the resources and helping them look for grants needs to be part of the deal. 
Um, and if we can find someone, you know, we've got about $20,000 left in our budget. So if there are people that, you know, in your networks who are good grant writers and whatnot, who could do some part-time work utilizing that money, that would be really helpful to getting this job to a full-time faster. James agrees with you. Um, yeah, so just again, keeping that, he was the one who proposed that solution in the first place. So I think um, let's make sure that we're staying on track with that and supporting this new person when they come in. Okay. And I don't know if they would divide it that the part-time person we're talking about would, I mean, there's a strategy to selecting grants and finding the ones that are appropriate and figuring out strategically which ones are worth applying for and which ones aren't. Right. And then there's the actual sitting down and doing Writing the, the writing, right. which is sometimes a different skill set. Right. And, and it might be more efficient to divide those two tasks up. I yeah. don't know. Well, and understanding person. where that skill set lies in the person that you, then we can fill in that other gap maybe with the money that we have left over. We had also talked about the Environmental Finance Center, which is an arm of the EPA. Yeah. So they are probably well familiar with all grants. On yeah, I level. reached out to Jeff Severn about that. He's taken on a new position um, recently. Um, oh, his his little, but it's still under EFC. Yeah, it's still under EFC. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but I can re-follow back up with him about what or, resources or they might. Or ask Michelle. Ask Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask Michelle then. Yeah. And see if we can get some help through them in order to either identify or Or at least write. tell us if they can help with that yeah. or we see what they say. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, Laura. Um, yeah. This is Tammy. I just wanted to update for the good of the group, speaking of grants. Um, this won't, this has the potential to impact some of our customers or, or citizens in Wichita, but the Kansas Housing Resource Cooperation is applying for a grant that's called a Solar for All program, mm -hmm. where um, they will hope to install rooftop solar in about 2,500 low in the homes of low income Kansans. So, you know, clearly they serve a much broader area than the Wichita area, but I did want to let the group know um, the, the award for the grant isn't due till July 24. So we're, we're a ways away from knowing that we're going to get it, but um, it will be grants that will go to um, geographically depressed low income uh, households, um, properties that provide affordable housing. Um, it will be, they, it will be run similar to their weatherization program, but um, they're very excited about it. So hopeful that that will come to fruition and we'll be able to promote that and, and help people, um, you know, get qualified for that if that, that grant money comes through. Great, sounds good. Thank you, Tammy. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, next on the agenda, uh, we had some unfortunate news. Um, so after we did our vote last month on um, the two projects uh, that we wanted to set forth for the, the grant or for the block grant. Um, Elizabeth went and checked with the EPA on what was allowed. I've already unfortunately had to let Elizabeth know this, but the um, trees are not going to be allowed as part of that project. So we have they to tell go, you why. Did they tell so you why? They did. I just contacted them and the email I got from our contact was pretty blunt, she's saying, no, this does not fit under it. It is not one of our categories um, that we can use. So planting trees is not an eligible use, I think was their exact kind of line, mm -hmm. so. Okay, so um, we need to go back to the drawing board, at least on the second half of the grant money um, and decide how we wanna use that. If we wanna put it all towards one way or if we wanna go back and look at some of the other opportunities that we had discussed last time. Well, the the Second most popular, uh, I mean, you know, through discussion that we had yeah. here at the board meeting, I, mean, I think the, the second most popular choice was, I mean, wasn't it involving, you know, some work done with government buildings? Yeah, energy efficiency. Yeah, energy efficiency stuff. I do kind of like the idea of not putting all our eggs in one basket. I, no, I no. Like we ought to at least pick two no. and yeah. Yeah. spread it around a little bit. I wanted trees. Do we do we have a definitive oh list of what will okay. not be rejected no. as uh, <laughs> something like this grant? I mean, I, I mean, even if, I mean if we can't get a list of the things we can do, can we at least get a list of the things that they'll say no to? I, I don't think they have that list either. So, I mean, as long as it, I, 
it has to fit under one of the blueprints. I did try to look to see if I could squeeze trees in somewhere and maybe make an argument, but I couldn't really find one that would fit directly under trees. So if you're looking at those blueprints that we sent out a couple times, if it fits under one of those, it should be eligible. And like weatherization for homes is actually directly on there. Um, so I think your best bet would be to choose something that's directly on there. This is James. Yep. Um, I, normally, I, I agree that to to not put all our eggs in one basket, but um, knowing that the low income energy efficiency would have been approved, and when I heard us talking about urban heat mitigation plan, it seems like this project with SCED could help work toward that, and so it would be nice to move on with this one and apply that toward low-income families who could really use this help. Low-income families who are homeowners, we mean. Just low-income families. I don't think they necessarily need to be homeowners, but there, there's lots of tools. Yeah, they that do. Well, if we're doing weatherization of homes, then presumably we're looking at homeowners. Right. The question is, or, are, they are homeowners? we talking about weatherization of, of you know, rental properties, then we're working with landlords right. and it's a, it, it's a different question. I mean, that's not to say that there isn't, you know, energy efficiencies that can be discovered there, but if we, if we present it as weatherizing homes, improving the energy efficiency of homes, then I think we're kind of locking ourselves into dealing with low income homeowners of which there are more than enough here in Wichita. So Okay. And I'm sorry, I don't, sorry, James, go ahead. If you. Uh, that's, that's just an interesting, um, that's an interesting explanation that uh, that was just described. So thank you, Russell. I, all right. And I should remember this and I'm sorry, I don't. Is low income part of the grant requirement? Yeah, so we're, we have to work with low income it's adjusted adjusted okay. it's it's suggested under the justice 40 so we have to try and fit it under the justice 40 which um i don't remember the exact definition of what justice 40 is but usually like marginalized low income communities okay mm -hmm. justice 40 stipulates that 40% of the the allocated budget goes to marginalized communities yeah so we're actually looking at maybe doing 100%. Yeah, so you guys already have 50% yeah. going to marginalized communities just by SCED is doing only specifically for low-income homeowners. It seemed like from our discussion last time um, that in terms of the city doing, and, and I'm all for for helping the city get more energy efficient, but it seemed like it might not be as productive as helping homeowners with this. Is it possible to do um, efficiency kits where you give people LED light bulbs, where you give people the little spongy, I don't know what you call it, the little spongy things that you put around your windows Insulation to keep the air up. Something. Yeah, there's, there's mm -hmm. the little thing that you can stick on there, but then you can take it off so the landlord can't complain. Things that are, are removable that anybody could take. That a renter could. That are renters and they could take to treat their homes yeah because the landlord's not doing it clearly they don't want to do it if, if you've seen anything that brandon johnson's been talking about they're not doing crap for their properties but something that could be brought in by the renter that they could remove rather than caulk which is not as easy to remove is it possible to do something like that to hit this missing group who there's a lot of them too mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have to like, I assume so, because it's under weatherization. I can look at the blueprint real quick. Um, the only issue I might see is there being an added cost with administrative load for doing that. Who's giving them out? Who's creating these kits? Who's ordering the pieces and putting them together? So that's the only thing is that you'd have to have a certain allocation of this budget to go to administrative. Could SCED do that for us? I'm not sure. Lauren might have the answer to that. Yeah, so Kansas Gas Service, we're actually in the middle of the process of distributing some weatherization kits that have things like the foam uh, sealant, the outlet sealers, the stuff that you put on the windows mm -hmm. and um, to seal that up. And those cost us, we have boxes and they were about $11 a piece. Hmm. 
And there was, let's see, there was seven of us yesterday and it took us two hours to build 400 of them. Um, and we've been working with United Way, but it, I, when I dropped them off at some of the neighborhood resource centers here in Wichita, the folks that work there said they are a huge hit and people are so thankful for them. Um, and they are able to get rid of them very quickly. I like so that idea. And I think Sked, uh, Sked could probably, you know, if we need somebody to be that fiscal agent kind of a thing, I think they could. Um, last year, they bought some extras on top of what we did. Um, and so, I mean, I'm glad to, to reach out to Aaron and see if they're willing to do something like that. Or if not, it might be, United Way might be. Yeah, go ahead, Russell. How much are each of the kits? He said she said 11. I can't hear. So how many could we be looking at providing to uh, homeowners with this grant? Enough well, for okay. every household in Wichita. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, you know, if, 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 if we could actually do something that was comprehensive that way, I mean, I mean, I don't know if that's, you know, and, and I don't know if that's the direction we want to go, but I mean, if, if we're talking about something that can have that kind of impact in terms of the receptivity of the people in the homes, recognizing the use of it, which means that it's actually, you know, more likely to be used. And if that's something that we could actually effectively flood the city with, I mean, that's the sort of thing that will attract media attention. That's the sort of thing that will generate productive conversations. You know, everybody at the, you know, everybody at the Sunday school, you know, they all got their kits, you know, that sort of thing. So it, it can spread that way. So you know, she just did some quick math on the amount. So it'd be about seven, a little over 17,000 kits. Wow. The one could, we could do. That's just that. using the half that is allocated. Yeah, using the half that hasn't already been allocated. And to like how many low-income homes are we looking at? There are 62,000 low-income individuals. But how some many of them homes? live in the how same homes. Yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't yeah. document that. I mean, this would probably hit a good chunk of them. Yeah. 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 It, it so, might yeah. hit the majority of them. Yeah. 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 So I think all right, well, not everybody's going to care. This but sounds a like a wonderful plan, Lori. But I mean, if, if we have evidence that people receive these things pretty positively, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they recognize, yeah. you know, that you this know. is a practical thing that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, and they don't have to be in the city neighborhood centers either. They can start there yeah. and then church preachers can take them sure. and hand them out to their yeah. congregations. They can really spread. And this, if you wanted to do a PR thing around this too, we could say we're doing this and would any other corporations or organizations like to add into the mix yeah. and get even then more we could of do them more. done? I think we could. There could be. And we could take the some... grains of Kansas Gas Service to uh -huh. find out exactly what the perfect. The is. Yeah, so. there could be some <laughs> nice messaging. Uh -huh. And I, I'm sure that Kansas Gas Service is not going to put LED light bulbs in there, but I would suggest that they do. Well, Lauren, did you? What did we you do? Didn't. No, but um, yeah, I mean, you can, we can certainly make that a bigger, and we have a, I think I would add those, that would definitely. Yeah, the vendor that I worked $11, with. $11, but again, if we can then look at corporate sponsorships, wink, 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 nudge, 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 you know, that, that could, uh, you know, expand the amount that we would have to do it. So I think, I mean, if we could keep, do the weatherization that we've already said, because that's bigger and that helps homes, you know, yeah, but, nice. but then the other half utilizing for this, I think that's brilliant. I, well, and the other I, thing it does, as we're giving out kits, we can get the word out about the bigger weatherization program. Like we also, hey, you can have this temporary thing, but we also have money for the bigger, bigger projects if you have yeah. that. Yeah. That brings Maybe in, we right? could design some cheap, inexpensive flyer that we put in every single one of these kits telling people to water the trees. <laughs> 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 yeah. if, you, if you want additional I energy efficiency, yeah. make sure your right. trees are alive. Yeah. Make sure your trees are alive so that you can have shade. Just like yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah, but maybe we right. can Why not? this. Perfect. A seed uh, I'm going to allow her to one comment. Yeah, that was not nice. now. Not anymore. It won't. Yeah, <laughs> no. No. Okay, sorry. We need to, I'm going to have her give a comment. Oh, we're running out of time tonight, but I'm okay. going to let her comment and then we'll do a vote on this plan and see if that's how, if the majority of us are wanting to go forward with this. Oh, I just wanted to say I've been talking about this for like the last 10 years and, and I think this is great. And um, uh, it, we 
when you talk about low income, a uh, big majority of the houses in, especially in North Central Wichita, are rentals. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so it um, it needs to be extended to the general population. You know, because landlords they you know slap some paint on these houses and rent them out mm -hmm. five six seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. So the renter. You know, they don't care. Uh, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't, you know, be just limited to, and if you're talking about 17,000 kids, that's going to hit a lot of people. A lot of people, yeah, because multiple know, people and, live in a house. As far as LED light bulbs, the, you know, that's not as big an issue as, because you can buy them at the dollar store now. Okay. But cracks in windows and, and drafts going under doors and, and yeah. if you're able to do the foam insulation and stuff like that, you know, yeah. this is what's you know. I remember you talking at an event maybe a couple of years ago yeah. with Climate Energy Project about how how much, especially that winter where we had that big cold snap that affected a lot of people financially, but how that yes. really impacted neighborhoods that yeah. have that exact situation that you're describing right now. And so I remember you talking about yeah, that. So when you're talking about um, a $300 light bill plus yeah. a gas bill, yeah. Yeah. you know, because most of these houses aren't just electric. You know, electrifying they're, they're paying for gas and electricity. Yeah, pretty painful but, experience. Um, as a founder of the Leonard Garrett Renaissance Institute, I would be glad to be um, a distribution or, you know, even have community meetings. I have access to a place where uh, information, uh, consumer education can go on. Mm -hmm. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Why didn't you mention this sooner? This is good. <laughs> She's like, I just came up with the idea right now. No. <laughs> Dor or Dorothy, wow. well, Lori, do you want to do you want to do a motion? Um, okay, I make a motion that the remainder, the other half of the monies okay. that we have designated, yes. should go Din. toward it's putting together kits like, a house. of energy efficiency there's temporary house. items that can be given to um, needy families that are renting. Or living. I mean, well, they could be let's homeowners. Just, let's, just, let's just say living. Just living. Yes, you're right. We want to make certain it gets to the people who live in homes, right. whether they're renting the homes or whether they own the homes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that's so an important Anybody, I will second that. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The eyes have it. Eyes have it. Hooray. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. That's everybody. gonna be a lot more work than letting sketches be in charge. So yeah. what information do you need? If we can find out what Lauren has in her kit, that would be helpful. And we can decide if we need to add anything to it or what we want to do with it. Yes. So um Lauren, if you want to email me kind of what you guys do and what your program looks who you're working with with United Way, and I can reach out to them. Um and okay. then I can okay. see what those kits are, how much they would okay. cost, and if it would be easier for us to give them more funding okay. or help them out um putting them together, kind of how we want to work that out. For sure, yeah, I can I'll drop one off for you. Um next week and i can send you that stuff right. that i have so far but it is going to be a significant we may not be able to do all the kits and the money because we, we probably will have to spend some money on the administrative part of it because it is a lot of a lot of time to put them together unless we want to have a you know a sustainability integration board packing party <laughs> we very well may need to we can do that every <laughs> week probably for a while <laughs> yeah. sorry i'm getting ow <laughs> You've been so good. Right up until now. Right up until now. I'm not going to have a finger after that. And he may choke on a cat, but we'll figure that all out. Um, Laura, okay. yes. could I just say that uh, the Inflation Reduction Act money is coming into Kansas. There was a round of uh, RFP on April 1. It was due on Ju June 1. It's not much time. It has a million dollars has been allocated to Olathe. Okay. Kansas for a comprehensive tree uh, program just in, includes just everything trees and green space and maintenance and replacement and 
looks as maybe something we could go after. Two hundred fifty thousand to Hutchinson, mostly for tree removal. So why? Sorry. That was a USDA uh -oh. program, but under the IRA. No. And <laughs> hey, hey, bud. I would hope that there's a 2024 okay. version so, of that. We would get notice. There is 2.6 million that was allocated. Our you know what? It's on our chairs. And I understand they will be doing an RFP. I'm going to have a deadline because you just messed up that chair for right now. Put it down. Well, the city should know. Sorry, we're having. I'm done. No, I'm you're, sorry. no, you're, no, it's not you. It's <laughs> having to be mama at the same time. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So the last one, Lori, you wanted to talk about the committees tonight too. So I wanted to, was there any other committee that's met? I don't think so. Okay. We have been able to meet one time with the um, waste and recycling committee and the bag committee. Um, we met once oh, and no <laughs> okay. thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth's gonna take you down. And we are putting together now a draft of what we would like to do as our proposal. Okay. We're making a little bit of changes. A lot of it's gonna be what Brett Prather had already come up with. Um, but Russell is helping to wordsmith a little bit and we're trying to put that together so that we have something to present okay. after the election. Um, and, uh, we will probably, once we can get some of this stuff put together, we'll go ahead and meet again and try to finalize it all so that we have it for you. Awesome. That sounds good. So we're thinking kind of, well, we were talking about right after the election, probably looking at that once we see what happens. Yeah. yeah. It'll either be, let's, let's, it'll be a no go or it'll be a, let's try it anyway. Um, so um, we'll see. I would do it. Let's try it before things switch around. Right. That's what I'm thinking. We yeah. got a couple months to, if we have to, I yeah. hope not. Yeah. So what I can do for right now, as we're talking about committees, um, I have a list that was left to me by Nina. I don't know how up to date it is or anything like that. Um, so we can kind of go through that and see if anyone wants to volunteer for committees, if this is still accurate, if that needs to be changed, the contact info kind of for that person, if that's okay with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Seven minutes. 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Well, I do need to open up for the last little bit on uh, public comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so there's the list. for the Community Engagement Education Committee, we have um, Michael as the lead, and I think like co-leads or other members mm -hmm. are Laura and Lauren. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, this I, I think I should be taken off of that one also, because I'm sure we would not agree on the direction we should be going in or the message that we would give publicly. So I think I should be taken off of that one. Okay, and then for the Economic Development Committee, I have Laura. Yeah, I have not really been doing that. Um, and this one needs to take off because Esther is no longer the committee, but the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Committee board leads. I have Esther and Tammy. Um, Tammy, are you still a part of that board or where is that at? Um, I mean, we haven't done anything lately and I would be willing to help someone, but I, I do not have the time or capacity to lead it at this point, but I, I'm willing to support it and help somebody who, who might want to, but I cannot be the lead of it. Okay, we'll keep going. And then if afterwards, if we want to try and assign people to boards or committees, sorry. Um, for the Green Space Committee, I have uh, Deborah, and then uh, it looks like Nina was on there temporarily. And, and I didn't last more than a week on that, um, yeah. I, I sim uh, also simply don't have time to do another committee, sorry. Okay, and then for the transportation committee, I have- And, and I will have a report from them next time. Okay, so you're still getting- Because I will, I will be more engaged in, on this part. Okay, cool. Um, and then Lori, I have you for the waste and recycling. Um, and then for the water committee, I have Philip, Simon, and Greg Allison. With those previous board members. Yeah, Philip's been gone a lot. Okay, and that's it. So um, for the Community Engagement and Education Committee, Laura and Lauren, does one of you guys want to be the lead? Lauren, can I ask you to do that? Well, before we start assigning people, so I'm new to the board, obviously not brand new. I've been on now, I guess, three months, four months. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm I'm here because of the I'm on the bicycle pedestrian advisory board. I wanted to do. Can I just ask in general? 
What was the thinking in terms of effectiveness, good use of time, uh, you know, you know, mission, you know, uh, you know, accomplishing the mission of oh, the board and so forth no. behind creating no. so many committees. So the bicycle pedestrian board, which I have been on somehow for going on nine years, I don't know how that has been possible, but I mean, I assume I'm going to be kicked off it at some point, but in our existence and the bicycle pedestrian board, I think has been a relatively effective board given, you know, the, the different ways you understand the ambit and the responsibility of the board. Um, we have occasionally had uh, temporary subcommittees, usually ones having to do with questions of, of wayfaring, signage, uh, that sort of thing. But insofar as, you know, permanent subcommittees, there hasn't been an interest in, you know, dividing our efforts so significantly. Now, this is a different kind of board. It's, it's literally in the name, Sustainability Integration Board. So you're bringing a lot of things together. But still, I mean, I count six different subcommittees. Is that yeah, like a really good use of our time? Is that something that was hammered out beforehand and everyone agreed to it or? So I can at least give some flavor on that from the beginning. So when we started this, we decided to do the, the, the boards with the idea that this is supposed to also generate more ideas from the community about how we handle things on this board. So, for example, I mean, Lori is excellent at this, right? But, you know, she's, you know, been able to generate ideas coming from the people she's been able to recruit for the board to bring up to us. That was the original idea with this. I think where it works as long as we put the effort into it, right, in terms of being able to collect more ideas and, and whatnot. But I think the issue has been that we're all busy. Right? Yeah. So that's, um, that's, that's, a, that's, I mean, I, I would think that that would be an important argument against proliferating the kinds of responsibilities that come along with the board. We're, we're already serving on a board. And I think it is extremely valuable that if there is a particular issue, you know, like pertaining to the plastic bags, that you find something that kind of takes the form of a task force and you have people that are meeting additionally in order to address that. But to have like, for example, a, a permanent subcommittee having to deal with communications or a permanent subcommittee having to deal with transportation, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe those are really valuable things, but I look at it and I'm just wondering, I mean, we went through the list and people were saying quite legitimately, wait, I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the time to be in leadership on that. Well, I mean, the original point, the original point was to try to actually make something happen from these ports, but to, to at least subcommittees. But if the reality is that we don't have the time to do that, then the, what's the point is the question, right? But that was the original intent was to be able to do more with this board by creating these subcommittees, but you have to have people who are able and willing to take that leadership in that time, right? And I think kind of to the point that's being heard, we haven't. <laughs> um, for various different reasons and probably individual reasons, but but that was the original, to your question, that was the original intent to be able to do more, um, you know, and, and I think something that Michael is, has rightly said about the EFC and whatnot, trying to utilize that document and, and use like that in each of these subcommittees. We originally looked at the EFC agreement or the EFC report, and that's how we picked the committees that we had originally started. Okay. okay. So there was original intent. Now, Again, I think there's a valid point now where the direction of the board has gone that maybe not as helpful. Maybe if we're dealing with a particular issue like trees that we do a subcommittee and work with people like Elizabeth to figure out what we want to do on a specific thing or the, the plastic bag task force, maybe that would be a better use of our time to pick individual ones that we work on for a limited amount of time. And understand when this committee started, it, it started Fresh. Yeah, there's nothing. There was there was yeah. no structure. There was no real um, direction about exactly right. what and, we were going to do. I'm, I'm sorry if I been, keep... No, I'm I'm glad. I'm very glad you asked because I think it is probably time we've we've been. It's been a year. Yeah. It's probably time to revisit it. It it was worth a try. The idea was that each of us on this board would be a committee chair, and be able to bring 
specifics like Florida's back to the board as a whole. It simply hasn't worked. I think we have one successful example and that's kind of right. pretty much it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need, we need to rethink. It. Yeah. So it's a very good question. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to say it like Ken speak. Actually, Ken, I'm going to open up to public comment anyway. So public comment away. <laughs> well, some of us have been working on yeah. this and we have hardware in place. Yeah. We've done things on yeah. the transportation committee uh, mm -hmm. with implementing the uh, EV the drive electric week, which is this, this weekend. This weekend. Yeah. yeah. I have flyers uh, if anybody wants one. And, yeah. and we have solar panels up uh, uh, on the grid. That people can disassemble if they rent and right. take them with you, uh, and, and an avenue to do that, and a, a paradigm in which other cities are doing, which we haven't implemented here yet, and we've cleared it with the metropolitan area planning and construction. Uh, so this can be done. Uh, I've just have been acting on my own. I've put in slight uh, presentations, I have a library of things I can present. I just don't have the structure. Uh, whereby to present it in this body here, but we are presenting in other uh, uh, auspices. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, um, when um, the gentleman over there, you know, it's like, do you have, you don't have time, everybody's on this, uh, on this board, but if you don't have time to definitely make change what's the point of the board you know well on the board at least you know there's things like what we just decided with lori there right yeah. through the thank you um through yeah, the, not, uh, you yeah. know, this is not my first time being here but what i'm saying is mm -hmm. you know it um it has to have a purpose sure you know and it, you can't say well we're all really busy so <laughs> we don't have time to to do this you know that's the whole point you know i'm not been yeah. uh, critical or anything, but I'm saying, you know, if you're too busy, then you don't need to be on this board. And mm -hmm. there's a lack of diversity. That's yeah. one thing that um, you're right. There is. Yep. There's no diversity yeah. on this board. No, you're, that's you are right, Mama. <laughs> or very little. I can't Mommy, say the least. Yeah. I have sand Oh, okay. that's good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I brought a flash drive tonight, but it looks like there's no time to present it. But it, it evaluates what we've been doing, or enumerates what we've been doing, uh, hardware-wise, mm -hmm. and how it can be accomplished mm -hmm. uh, just by yeah. being off line for a while mm -hmm. during peak demand times mm -hmm. or time of use what other cities are doing and those are the handouts I, I present I don't think I gave one to you Russell but um, that's what that is like and that's what's happening uh, in many communities and that's what saved the Texas grid on August 10th according mm -hmm. to the literature that uh, we subscribe to okay. uh, it was battery storage uh, and this can take place in a very small, even apartments, dwellers can have these. Yeah. They go off offline during the peak demand times. It saves the utility so much money from having to go online uh, out on, the, on the public acceptance uh, power pool or whatever they're drawing. And they actually pay you per kilowatt hour cash. And that's what's happening in, in many parts of the country, including Portland, go to Transport Evolve. Uh, some of their latest uh, uh, findings there that the Portland Power and Light is paying people to go offline using their EVs or their power walls in their homes that really don't cost that much. They just want to go out a few hours and they give you like a dollar per kilowatt hour. Yeah. That's me. That's me. I, I mean, I, I would want to say that. Your point earlier about providing some sort of structure. I mean, that is an argument for, you know, these subcommittees. That is an argument for providing support for the people who are really passionate mm -hmm. about one specific approach or one specific set of, of issues to find other people that are passionate and dive into them. And then the SIB 
can provide some sort of structure to bring those things forward. So that was I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, come off as saying, you know, no to you know, any change. such kind of organization <laughs> because obviously it works. The library um, will close. But maybe we should think about making you have books or other items to check out. out. The staff are available you know, near the self check stations to assist. Absolutely. Please save all um, why don't we Why don't we continue this discussion time. about the how we restructure this and how we really get it for for the next month? Um, but I think we all agree that there needs to be some restructuring of it. Okay. I think we are at time. I would. Thank you. Um, I think we are at time, so I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting for the evening, and we'll see everybody back next month. Thank you for providing organization and leadership in the midst of, of complicated familial realities. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>